there has been more stormy weather, but I have dared to presume that you are safe and sound. I am exercising patience until the time arrives and you reach the port. With much love from your affectionate father, H.W. Woodgate. H.W. Woodgate never saw his son again. Thomas Woodgate's frozen body was found aboard the Metafa, a large ore freighter ripped apart just outside the port of Duluth. His father's letter was found in his pocket. Mary McFadden, a reporter for the Duluth News Tribune, was part of the crowd that gathered to watch the life-saving crew's attempt to save the men trapped on the ship. Nine men have died before our eyes. They looked hungrily at us. We safely, helplessly gazing at their struggle to live. 29 vessels were damaged or destroyed, including the Madeira, which crashed off Gold Rock just north of Split Rock. In all, as many as 33 people lost their lives as a result of this one storm. It has been a week that will always be remembered. Nothing can replace the many lives that have been sacrificed on the altar of commerce to appease the wrath of the lake. In January 1907, the owners of more than 500 bulk freighters met and proposed a light station at Split Rock. During the last three years, considerably over $1 million worth of vessels and cargoes have been wrecked in the vicinity of Split Rock Point. We believe that a lighthouse and fog whistle established near that point will do away with the serious danger to lives and property. Congress passed a bill and approved $75,000 for a lighthouse and fog signal. Workers cleared the area of trees and brush and drilled and blasted for building foundations. The initial undertaking was to land and install a powerful hoisting engine. The only access to Split Rock Point in 1909 was by boat. The first supplies had to be hoisted up the cliff. Six years later, a tramway built on the steep hill made supplying the lighthouse easier. When the workers stopped for the winter in 1909, the tower's steel uprights were rooted in the rock outcropping. Work resumed the next spring, and soon the light station was complete. Towering over Lake Superior, ready to emanate its white beam at 10 second intervals to many a freshwater mariner. Thirty-five keepers and their families made the light station their home during its 59 years of operation. And under their watch, not one ship went down. By the 1960s, radar and other modern navigational equipment rendered the light and Foghorn obsolete. Split Rock Lighthouse closed in 1969. In 1971, it reopened to the public as part of a new state park and historic site. In 2010, Split Rock turned 100. Visitors today see one of the best preserved examples of a Great Lakes light station in the United States, and one of the few that is designated a National Historic Landmark.